Here I have some nuclear fuel. This might have sounded a bit more dramatic than it should be, but it's true. These are pellets made from uranium dioxide. If you were to stack several of them together, you would have what's called a fuel rod. This uranium dioxide is extremely dense, but the radiation it emits is still within reasonable limits. A quick check with a dosimeter shows a dose rate of 9 microsieverts per hour. That's roughly 90 times the background radiation, definitely not something I would put under my pillow. Of course it requires analysis to determine what's actually in it. So I took some uranium dust and carefully fixed it to a strip of adhesive tape. Why? I'm about to take an alpha spectrum of it. This is always done in a vacuum and for that you also need a large surface area. However, by sucking out the air and subsequently letting air in after the measurement, turbulences can occur which could stir up potentially unattached uranium dust and could contaminate the entire detector. I really don't want that. So I tested to make sure everything stays on the adhesive tape and now it's off to the spectrometer. After one hour we have a finished spectrum. And this is also where the answer lies as to why I could handle it so casually. These pellets are actually unburned natural uranium pellets. You can see the low energy peak of uranium 238 at 4198 kilo electron volts. And where there's uranium 238, you will also find its decayed product uranium 234, whose peak can be seen at 4774 kilo electron volts. So these pellets were originally likely intended for a heavy water moderated reactor. They can operate with both MOX mix oxide fuels and natural uranium pellets. A MOX fuel element would contain plutonium 239, which would have been visible in the alpha spectrum at 5.1 mega electron volts, but it's not. Well, I guess I have to show you a gamma spectrum alongside the alpha spectrum. So let's take a look at this. And we can see uranium 235 lines, huh? Shouldn't have we seen that in the alpha spectrum too? Well, uranium 235 has an alpha energy of 4.4 mega electron volts, which is easily missed. But if you look closely and want to see it, you can vaguely discern the right turning point there. Okay, back to the gamma spectrum. It's clear that natural uranium from which the pellets are made of contains a 0.7% fraction of uranium-235, which is why you can see it in the gamma spectrum. Uranium-238 itself does not have any noticeable gamma lines. However, you can see the daughter nuclide, thorium-234. And you can also see its daughter nuclide, protactinium-234m. Then it decays into uranium-234, which you don't see in the gamma spectrum. Further decay products are not visible due to the relatively recent chemical processing for the production of these pellets. The decay products haven't had time to form. Next in line would have been thorium-230 with a half-life of 75,000 years and the equilibrium depends on the daughter nuclide and 47,000 years half-life is simply too long for a pellet that was manufactured in the recent decades. Quick note on the advantages of heavy water reactors, for which these pellets were intended. Heavy water reactors use D2O as a moderator and coolant. Deuterium has a lower neutron capture cross-section than normal hydrogen, allowing more neutrons to pass through. This is necessary because natural uranium does not generate as high of a neutron flux as enriched uranium. This means that the neutron flux that we already have should not be absorbed by a relatively strong moderator like light water. Of course there are minimal amounts of tritium produced in the coolant when moderated with heavy water as opposed to be in the fuel rod as in light water reactor. However, this radioactive hydrogen actually has applications. More on that in another video. Back to the nuclear fuel here in the university. We have the privilege of using these natural uranium dioxide pellets as a source of tetravalent uranium. In another video, I will show you what it can be used for. With that being said, goodbye.